13th in the championship. The takeover happened, as I said it would. People will be... Oh, when, when have we got leads? is going on there fucking hell <laughs> now then people <laughs> welcome back to the just your football show i do apologize uh for being late i was out this morning i had to go uh get something sorted with my back hence why the camera's going a bit mad because i'm having to sit up right because i've done my back in um but yeah yeah it's not great mate low back's killing me um we are live uh of course i'm here with my good friend uh mr lachlan uh of uh, leicester city fame Locks, as you all know him. Uh, I thought we would get together and have a little chinwag because, um, uh, yeah, it's <laughs> ever the wind-up merchant, ever the guy to be calling in the receipts and all that sort of stuff. You know how it goes. Um, me and Locks are very similar in that respect. Um, but, yeah, we're, we're here to have a bit of fun. And also, folks, we're going to be talking about what, for me, could prove to be the pivotal weekend of the season, I think. You know, you've got eight games left. And you've got two games in the space of three days. You've got Good Friday, Easter Monday, four days, sorry. Math's not my strong point. But it's going to be a little bit wild. Um, and uh, so we'll talk about that, not just for our teams, but what we think other teams might do and that as well. Um, so without further ado, let's uh, let's get stuck into it. But Locks, talk to me, brother. How are you? Because as the thumbnail shows, I know I requested you to do. You are pretty down in the dumps right now, aren't you, bro? Yeah, man. You know what? This is going to make me sound like a really terrible football fan, right? You're going to actually banter me for this, mate, and people in the <laughs> chat. I was offered a ticket for the Bristol City game this Friday, and I said I couldn't stomach it. I couldn't go. I can't yeah. go, mate. It is bothering me. Like, football is bothering me big time right now. Uh, you know, I know it sounds stupid because I'm here now chatting about it, but I just think... Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really... It's just, It's just... You know what it's like, mate. We all know what it's like when football... You know, because the women yeah, we in had, our we lives... Went through last, we went through last season, bro. It was rough yeah, yeah, yeah. last season. Women in, in, in our lives, mate, my, like my girlfriend, She, they're like, oh, it's only football, football. get over it. Yeah, but it's yeah, yeah, it's yeah. not just football for us, and it's it's really difficult. Um, bro, but, uh, just to so put yeah. that into perspective, how important it is in our lives. When I separated from Harry's mum, one of the things she actually said to me, she turned around and said to me, and I fucking hate Leeds. <laughs> and that was like a dagger to the heart, bro. I was like, oh, we've gone there, have we? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But it shows yeah, how yeah. annoying it can be for your significant other as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, I mean, Friday games are the worst for them, mate, because then your whole weekend you're just like, you know, fuming or, or pissed yeah. off. But, I mean, to be fair, she's had like she had like five months off it because we were storming the league, mate. But uh, but now yeah, it's... Yeah, exactly. uh, she was like, oh, I love this, Lox. You, yeah, yeah. you were like, what does Conor McGregor say? Get the red panties <laughs> out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now yes, you're man. like, put the Bridget Joneses on, man. Nothing's happening here, I'm telling you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. Listen, folks, please do smash a like on this video as well. We're getting, we're getting so close now to Friday. Like, I'm excited. I worked out today. I'm going to be live from about half 11 o'clock, so I'm going to be doing, like, near, near enough a 12-hour shift. Uh, but I'm here for it. I can't wait for Friday. Before we get into, like, FFP stuff, and um, before mm. we get into, you know, the, the title running and that, I'm buzzing for the week. Are you? Are you? Well, you've just said that you got offered a ticket for Bristol City and you don't fancy it, right? Yeah, it's not even like that. You know, my decision there isn't even scared of losing or anything like that. It's just football in general. You know what I mean? It's just like I can't stomach it because um, things just seem to be going downhill, mate. And um, yeah, I don't know, mate. It's just, it's really, but the, the thing is, yeah, like you said, I agree with you. It's a massive weekend of football. I think like if Leicester won, for example, and Leeds or it, and Ipswich drop points, then like suddenly things are looking like better again. But yeah, I really can't see that happening, mate. Um, or, the mad you know, thing is, bro, as well, how do you feel about the way that um, I'm buzzing for it, obviously, because I create content, but how are you around the actual where the fixtures have landed because like both game days you start off first Leeds United finish there's a different kind of pressure isn't there do you know what I mean and then you've got Ipswich and Southampton sandwiched in between 
Yeah, I don't mind it, mate. I think I would much. I think I prefer it to then like us playing later than you. Let's say, like if you were, if you like, if, if you, you was had all free win, and then we're playing Watford, it's like, oh shit, we've got to win now. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's why I wouldn't. That's why I prefer it now for us. I mean, I, I wouldn't like to see Leeds doing the early kickoff winning and then last thinking. Yeah, with uh, five five points behind. No, sorry, three points behind. Um, we have to win, you know, to, yeah. to on goal difference again. So, yeah, it's uh, I am I'm not too bothered by that, mate. But we've got, I think, and I know I saw somebody say Sky Sports leads. I think you must be on Sky Sports a lot as well coming up. We, we, I think six of our next seven are Sky games. Yeah. We, so, do you know how many we've had? Will will have had by the end of the season? Thirty one. Um, yeah, it's thirty one of a forty six game seasons not on because okay, it's great for those that got listen. It means my streams go better. I shouldn't really complain. But what I'm saying is, for them match-going fans, it's a joke. Because that's 31 fixture changes. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And um, the managers obviously hate it. Of course they do. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, but then a lot of the time, some of the players perform. Some of the players show up on TV. You know what I mean? Mm. It's like, you know, I know people will say, well, footballers, they're professional, whatever. It won't change mm. their performance. But I can only think if I was a footballer, you know, if, if trying to put my my myself in the mind of a footballer, if you knew you were plastered all over Sky Sports, you'd want to you'd want to perform even more, right? You'd want to you'd want to be better than Espe- even especially what you usually especially are. when there might be a fire sale at your club in the summer, mate. Well, exactly, <laughs> mate. This is what I said about the Chel- after the Leicester FA Cup game. I said like because Dewsbury Hall had his first good game in about God knows how many weeks. I thought, oh, there you go, he's in the shot window. Yeah. So yeah, he's been we'll... linked to Manchester United. You know, have uh, you seen that? Yeah. Yeah, because um, um, Cass uh, from Never a Foul tagged me in a tweet saying, "Please go up with Ipswich because we want Dewsbury Hall and we'll get him at a reduced price if he's in the Championship." I I think Dewsbury Hall is very much he, he's he's got, he's smarter than to go to Man United. I think he would much rather go to a Brighton like he was linked with a, a team he where he's going to start in a corner though. I think maybe no, not that. Just he won't play. He won't play. Oh, he won't Bruno, play at Man United. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah fair. And play. So, so I think he's very much, um, yeah, more of a kind of you know, like Ma- James Madison, for example. Like, are, there there would have been more clubs interested in him last yeah, summer. He chose Tottenham because he knew he'd start at Tottenham. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. he wanted to be one of the main. It's ain't no know. Danny Drinkwater, mate. Going to Chelsea when he had <laughs> no, no yeah. chance of starting. Yeah, wild. Yeah, uh, some would say Calvin the same at City. To be fair, yeah, a lot of Leeds fans are saying that now. But I, I, yeah. Anyway, I never. Right, you, mate. you never saw. Being that starter, you know what I mean. No, but I thought he genuinely would 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 get games. I didn't think it'd go as bad as it did for him, bro. Like mm, it's going to yeah. probably turn out to be the the end of his tenure at the top because I I don't see now with the emergence of Kobe Mainu, the fact that we, we've only got ten Premier League games, he's not going to start at West Ham because he's he's balls that up. He doesn't go to the Euros, and then what? Then what for Calvin? You know what I mean? So. Leicester in the championship. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, true, yeah. true. <laughs> um, right, mate. Let's let's talk about this this FFP stuff because I read an athletic article last night that says, yeah. you know, um, this is. I think he's the Leicester guy as well, right? The guy who put it Rob together. Tanner. Rob Tanner. Yeah, I was uh, re- reading some bits. Um, it seems like you might have a case in terms of not not. Right, I'm just trying to think. When you go to the Premier League, if you go to the Premier League, it sounds like you might have a case to at least appeal it because there's this issue over James Madison over when you sold him. A bit like Forrest with the um, Brennan Johnson stuff. They got given a little bit of thing with that as well and they ended up getting it you know, reduced, etc. Um, but I know, I guess your issue isn't with the Premier League. It's with the EFL, right? And the fact that they're trying... <laughs> trying to get involved. Yeah, look, I, I've seen a lot of Leeds fans obviously call me out on the whole uh, targeted attack thing that I tweeted about. Yeah, it was about. funny, looks. I had to retweet it. I, I know. Like, He's losing his mind. I'm going to retweet it. <laughs> yeah, so EFL tried to, uh, about a month ago now, they came. To, uh, it came out that they wanted us to submit a business plan because yeah. they they believe, and they're, they're right probably, that we, we are on course to to breach FFP this season. So we obviously yeah. then, again, with this Nick DeMarco lawyer, uh, he he said that, you know, they argued that we don't have to submit the business plan because this whole fast track thing, I'm not sure what it is exactly. We were in the in the championship to agree to them rules that, that they could put us under this business plan early or whatever. 
And, and we won that, by the way. We won that decision. Yeah, EFL that. backed yeah. off and said, OK, fine, you don't need to give us anything until the end of the season. My problem now is it feels like because we've done that, because we've kind of shit on the EFL a little bit with that one, yeah. it feels You've now... You've basically but, found a loophole, haven't you, that they're now going yes, to cause moving forward. I don't understand how they can give us a transfer embargo. I don't yeah. understand. Because we haven't breached FFP yet. We are, we're probably going to. Right, unless we. Yeah, that's the thing. I think EFL, having looked at the books, uh, from what I heard this morning on uh, one of the athletic pods as well, they were saying that the EFL believe that you're going to breach it again, like this this season as well. Yeah, but this whole transfer embargo, I think, is literally just a thing that they've decided to do as a bit of a fuck you. Because yeah. who who are we signing in 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 March anyway, mate? We're not signing fucking no one. We're no, not signing yeah. anyone. Yeah, yeah. And I just think that. Um, I feel like it's because look, we, if we get promoted, there's competition money, uh, you know, prize money there. We've also got until June the 30th to sell anyone, which we can possibly do. You know, we could do that. If if somebody came in for Dewsbury Hall, middle of June, late June, whatever, we can sell him or we could sell others. We, we have uh, Samari out on loan, you know, Sevilla might want to sign him. Permanently. So, we we at the moment yes we're on course to breach ffp but we haven't breached it yet we're in the efl so i just don't under, I, I do feel like the whole transfer embargo thing is very much them giving us a bit of shit back because we we told them to f off with the whole uh, business plan thing so mm. because if we gave them the business plan early in, in the season they might have basically then enforced us to sell in January, which we obviously didn't do. And to be fair, we didn't buy anyone in January. You know what I mean? We didn't. Uh, and the oh, whole yeah, Sensi, yeah. the whole Stefano Sensi deal. Do you think that's deal, why then? Because you were aware that this was coming over the horizon? Um, the whole St Stefano Sensi thing, uh, he was at the training ground and, until the, the deadline at midnight uh, or 11, whenever it was. Um, we were trying to do everything we could to get it, you know, get the deal over the line. And it involved stuff like, I think it changed like three or four times. One part was we would loan him until the end of the season and then we would buy him. Uh, another one was we'd give them like 200 grand now and then like a million at the end of the season. So there were loads of different things, but we, we couldn't get it over the line apparently. And, and it is obviously, I mean, it was obvious at the time. It's even more obvious now that is it was because of FFP. Um, but a part of me thinks like if we were gonna if we we're gonna breach it anyway, we should have just fucking signed them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, but then, then it would have looked worse, obviously, if we had if we'd signed someone in January, knowing that FFP was around the corner. So, um, so yeah, yeah, that's why we didn't sign anyone in January. Um, but yeah, this is my whole thing. This is why I'm so angry, mate. Is because we haven't breached the Premier League. We breached. We've clearly breached, right? We've clearly yeah, yeah. breached FFP. You're accepting that, yeah. I'm accepting it's like, the breach. It's about it. 70 million, is it? Uh, 40, 40, mil 40, oh, 40 70, million. 40 million over the... Seven, over the yeah, yeah, sorry. 70 um, might be um, Forest or Everton. I can't remember, but go on, mate, yeah. And this is, again, a whole, you know, a whole nother thing I could get into about... I mean, I spoke to you on my show about it last week, mate, yeah, last yeah. Tuesday, saying FFP. And I've said this way before Leicester were involved. This isn't me coming out now say, because of because Leicester were involved. I said it. I said it. Well, probably a couple of years ago, a few months ago. FFP is like a disguise. It's not financial fair play at all. It's not fair to anyone except the top six, right? That's the, that's just a fact. Yes, everyone voted on it, right? Including Leicester. Leicester voted for it, but it's still not. It's not fair because a team like Leicester or Leeds or Villa can't spend anywhere near the amount that. A Man City, a Man United, a Liverpool can. Yeah. So tell me how that's fair. You know, I said that if oil money come into Newcastle, if they want to spend their money and and try and get Newcastle to the top of the Premier League, they're well within the right, in my opinion. That you know, mm. so I, I don't see. You know, and people say it's to protect the club. Well, you know, surely the fit and proper owners test and all that 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 should that should stop any you know wrong ones coming in anyway. So. Mm. Mm. Yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying. Like we could, we can debate FFP and look. By all accounts, having done a bit of research and seeing bits online, they're going to scrap it this summer anyway. Um, but then, 
yeah. 85% of your revenue, I think, is going to be the, the, the plan. Um, so regardless of losses, as long as you're within that. But then again, that also favours the big teams. I do agree, mate. Although it would favour me and me and you in terms of if we went up and you're competing with a Palace, our revenue's bigger than theirs. It's factual, you know? So, yes, it would help us in that respect, but our revenue doesn't touch even the fucking bottom end of Manchester United's and Cities and Liverpool's, etc. So, the, it is just creating a bigger gap as well, I think. But ultimately, like, look, folks, Lox isn't sat here saying we haven't brought the rules. He accepts that they have brought the Premier League rules. The the difference with the... But here's a, here's a question for you, mate. And... Uh, Look, Joe, Joe Blackburn's having a bit of fun with this, but I do just want to dip into this, mate, because he said, is it more likely next season that Leicester are relegated from the Premier League or relegated from the Championship? I know that might seem far away, but having read the article, having done a bit of research, it's clear that you're 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 going to challenge this. There's certain rules you're putting in place and you're trying to prolong it, etc. That's what every football club would do. That's what Leeds United would do. It's facts, folks. We've seen it already. Every club that's been under this has, has appealed it. You know, Leicester have gone and contacted the guy who helped Nottingham Forest out and says, right, will you come and help us out now? Do you know what I mean? So that guy's buzzing, by the way. He'll be gutted when FAP gone. Could, can you imagine what his bank balance is looking like at the minute? This What was his name again? Look. Nick DeMarco. Nick DeMarco. But here is the question, and I think Joe Blackburn's touched on it. And obviously, um, it's in this article by Rob Tanner. He says, following relegation, having had the Premier League's seven highest playing budget, so that's quite a lot, it will be almost impossible to comply with the tighter restrictions in the EFL for a second season without dramatic action and cost-cutting by the club. Now, if you did get promoted, then obviously you do have TV revenue, other income that you get from being a Premier League team. Yes, you might have a points deduction, but you'd, you'd probably be able to navigate and give yourself a chance of staying up. If you didn't go up, let's say you this this drop-off, which is what it is, continues, right? You lose against Bristol City, you get beat on Monday, whatever it may be, and you don't finish top two, and you don't go up. The fact that you would have to make such big cuts, Harry Winks, does he stay on 90 grand a week? Connor Cody, I know he's not being played, but he's on a lot of money. Jimmy Vardy, probably still on a lot of money. Do you worry then that there is a chance that you then get stuck in the EFL, like we've seen with other club Leeds United, yeah, did it, yeah. mate, and ended up in League One. West Brom, yes, they're finally booked, but they missed the parachute payments. They stuck. Watford, they missed the para parachute. They do say if you don't get up within that three season or two seasons, whatever it is, after being in the Premier League, it is rock hard because your parachute payments are gone and you lose your best players. With this, on top of possible sanctions from the EFL, if you didn't go up, mate, it, it could be catastrophic, no? Or am I being too dramatic? Well, the if we go up, I think the points deduction is a, allegedly it's going to be somewhere in the region of fifteen or fourteen points. The reason that for that much? is because it's five, it's six points plus one point. It's meant to be six points plus one point for every five million you went over. That would be fourteen points, and we don't get the any Premier mitigation. League might ask that, but I, I don't see them giving you that. Surely not. I well, mean, I'd love it, do, I can't lie it's to you. Curtains. That's... It's, it's curtains. If It, yeah, it would be curtains big, if, it, if it was yeah. that. Because then you need to win, what, uh, five games to only be on zero points, you yeah, know? Yeah. So out of a 38-game season. Um, but then and you there's aren't no getting, as well, you aren't getting a Luton, and a Chef United and a Burnley yeah. com coming up. You're getting a Leeds, Ipswich, you, you know, whatever it yes. may be. But then there's no other option because we can't take it this season because then that, <laughs> you know what I mean? That... What what situation are we in this? You know, if they give us yeah. even as if the EFL, I've heard rumors, and these are only rumors because obviously we we've heard now that EFL and Premier League are like working together on this, and to and it will be going forward because obviously of what's happened to Leicester because of this example, there needs to be a clearer um, connection between the two leagues on on FFP. Um, I've heard rumors. I don't know if, there, if there's any truth to them at all that we will be offered a points deduction this year in the Championship. If to to avoid a bigger one in the Premier League, so if, if we take a deduction this season, it will be less than what it would be sure, in the Premier League. So even if they give us six points, even if they say you take six points this season, we're we're done for, mate. It's the playoffs. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so the only the only thing I can think is, yeah, you just you're just gonna have to fight the Premier League. 
and, and hope you get either you either win or you get a smaller deduction you know a, 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 an all right points deductions next season um mm. but yeah you question about if we don't go up i mean if we don't get promoted this year um and then let's say we get uh Let's just let's just say six points deduction in the championship yeah. next season. Let's just go with six. It's going to be difficult, mate. We'll be losing Dewsbury Hall. We'll probably be losing a couple of the new ones we sign. We'll probably lose Mads Hermanson. He, he'll have You've a decent Pereira, bit of Ndidi, Pereira, indeed. Well, indeed, as it stands, indeed, Fass, Vardy, Ian Acho, Vestergaard. They're going anyway because they're out of contracts and under the transfer embargo, we're not even allowed to sign anyone on a new contract. Gives so us some players to sign when we get promoted. <laughs> <laughs> but um, so, so there's, you know, I, I, I do believe, yeah, if we don't get promoted this season, we will be an EFL club for, um, you know, I don't want to say eternity, but, you know, for at least the next five years, mate. I really do. I don't think we will get promoted next season, um, mm. especially with the, uh, with the points deduction and the lack of... Because if we stay in this league, there is no... We may we I don't, we don't know how long this transfer embargo is going to go on for, mate. You know this transfer embargo yeah, could exactly. go on for months, yeah. and if that is the case, and we are still an EFL club under an EFL transfer embargo, mm. well, we can't looking sign at, anyone in the summer. Yeah, looking at this, like Vega, Vega makes a point here and says, "Look, the e, uh, English football authority is going to make an example out of Leicester because of the brazen mockery." Just watch now. Just to add on to this, and you can respond. Um, but in Rob Tanner's article, it says. To stop Leicester from becoming a model for clubs who their eyes want to flout the rules and gamble on getting straight back up, the EFL has tried to impose a business plan on the club, which is what you're on about, which would have constrained their budget and resulted in the sales of players and other cuts. Having lost that case, the EFL has now registered a ban, which is what you were saying. It almost feels like they're going boof. Um but then what it also has said, the EFL did so in the expectation that Leicester would breach again this season. That means it will push hard for a further charge, even if Leicester go up, meaning the club could face two charges in one season like Everton have. A possible double figures deficit would be a huge hurdle to overcome. And that's what you were saying, like that 15 points, etc. So oh, it's the it... problem here with, with the EFL and not so much the Premier League for you, where you're like, look, but... I guess what Vegas saying the EFL are probably going. We can't let these take the piss out of us. Like, like I know, obviously, mo like they're not going to speak like this. But let's see it as like let's do a try to mug us off. Like let's make sure yeah, we yeah. take them to the cleaners. Yeah, uh, you know what, mate? I absolutely hate this. Uh, this whole. <sighs> I just hate. I hate this whole. You know, uh, Leicester flattered the world. The uh, flattered the rules and and um, have gone all in on on getting promotion. We had a net transfer profit. Like, don't you make the people are making it sound like we've gone and spent, you know, we're minus 50 or something or minus 40 this, 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 uh, this season in the, in the transfer window. We sold James Madison for 40 million. We sold, uh, Harvey Barnes for 35 or 40 million. We sold Castagna for what, 15 million. Yeah. You know, we, and, and then we brought in, you know, play the fair enough on the whole. You know, we've spoken about this, the Harry Winks thing. Given Harry Winks ninety grand a week is fucking crazy, but you know, we we brought in Winks, Cody, Hermanson, then a couple of other players that you know were, were were peanuts. And people are making it sound like we've gone on some whole massive transfer spend, transfer yeah. like um, a Chelsea spend, which yeah. you haven't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. haven't at all. You know, we we are up, and you know, let's not get this twisted, mate. Leicester City are net profit for transfers since they came back to the Premier League in 2014, right? Yeah. We have consistently bought players on the cheap and sold them apart from one transfer window and sold them for big money. And we've done that since 2014. And um, where we've been caught out again is we've been caught out at having to spend big on wages to entice certain players to the club. Unfortunately, mm. those certain players were Pony, uh, Pat Sandaka, Samari, Vestergaard. Um, so this is this is the problem. And you know, people say Leicester have got the seventh highest had had the seventh highest wages, right? That that's right, isn't it? What you read, seventh highest wages in yeah, the Premier League. In the Premier League, yep, yep. That makes sense to me because we were the seventh best club in the Premier League for many for a few Do years. You know what? 
you know what as well, mate? Just to sort of like, and I don't, I don't need to get like, mm. but I listened to Stick to Football this morning. Have you listened to it yet? I, I haven't to listened to it. I haven't it's listened to the latest right? one. And they have Les Ferdinand on. And obviously yeah. Les Ferdinand went on to be director of football at QPR. Mm -hmm. And when they dropped out of the Premier League, they paid the fourth highest wages, which is only three ahead of, you know, and we yeah. know how bad that QPR, you know, when they bought like the likes of Bojan and all these players under uh, under Mark Hughes. And look at QPR now. Because they had such a turnaround, say, right, we've got to get all these players on massive wages off the books. We've then got to bring in players that aren't massively expensive because we can't afford to bring... So it's sort of a similar sort of situation in a sense that you had such a high wage budget and obviously QPR, they, they were fourth in the Premier League, which is wild when you think about it. But that that was a few years ago. Football's even m more. Um, Bojan was stoked, Joe. Sorry, yeah, my apologies. You know who I mean, though. They bought some some mad people at QPR anyway when, when he was there. I forget the guy from Madrid who they bought. But anyway, they, you know, the likes of CC, etc. Yeah, my bad, though. Um, but are you worried of a similar sort of situation, bro? Oh, if we don't get promoted, I can I can definitely see that happening. Yeah, yeah. Um, for sure. Yeah, there's no way around that. I, I agree with it completely. Um, you know, we have to go up this season. Yeah. Um, and you know what the worst thing is, mate? Like, if we hadn't have bottled 17 points, we may have probably turned to the EFL and said, yeah, that's fine. Give us it this season. Yeah, Give yeah, us the points. Yeah, of course. You yeah. know, if we were 15 points clear of, of second place, like we were at some stages this season, yeah, it's fine, mate. Give us the this five, six, seven points this season. We'll take it. No worries. Slap on the wrist. You know what I mean? And that's fine. Yeah. Um, only now that we've obviously bottled... Uh, first, well, we bottled 15 points, 17 points. Only now it's kind of like it, it's a lot. We're in a lot worse of a situation um, than we would yeah. have been. So, um, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, it's wild. I'm just sorry. I'm just looking. I'm just going through and I'm going to look at that um, that QPR squad that did get. Oh, okay. Get promoted. Wild. Um, now, Borson. Who's Borson? Do you know Stefan Borson? Stefan Borson is, uh, yeah, football finance expert. Um, is he the guy that's been on Talk Sport recently? Yes, yeah, yes, yeah, he I've is, and, and he he yeah. he was the former finance advisor yeah. for Man City. So yeah, of course, yeah, I've heard him actually, but but he says, um, and I think this is a is a is a point. He makes this point: Leicester City choosing a confrontational approach with the leagues especially the EFL, rather than adopting a more, you know, relaxed one, okay, we'll have a chat about it. Um, Leicester have upset both leagues and will yep. not have any sympathisers from fellow clubs. So are you worried about, um, are you worried about, well, you've mentioned it, that they go, yeah, you, you're trying to think, so we're going to we're gonna throw the book at you, man. We, we've got sympathisers from two clubs, actually. We have got sympathisers from uh, from Who some Who? some Forest fans, mate. Forest fans. Oh, obviously, have... Forest and Everton. Come on, and Everton. Bro. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's what I'm no, saying. Yeah, but they're, they're going to be sympathisers, locks, man. But... You know who should be <laughs> sympathising. You... you know who, who, who should be sympathising. You know who me. should be. You're say me. All of you. All of you. Oh, fuck clock, off, all man. of all of you lot. Right. All of you lot that dare to dream of oh, being we go. a Leicester City. <laughs> All of you, right, that dare to dream of being a Leicester City, winning the Premier League or or uh, getting getting into Europe. And I know people rip me for this, but getting into Europe, right, you will not be able to do that consistently ever with these rules. You will not be able to. Look at Villa. Villa are Can about I... to... Hold on, hold on. Villa, Villa are about to breach FFP. Villa are about to breach FFP unless they do something drastic. Newcastle couldn't sign barely anyone because of FFP, right? They couldn't do what they wanted to do. These clubs, including Leeds, including, you know, whoever else, they will not be able to consistently get into the top six with these rules. And that's why I think that some fans from clubs lower down should have a little bit of sympathy because for many years, Leicester seemed to be doing it the right way. We bought Maguire for 15 million, sold him for 80. We bought, uh, we had Chilwell come through the, the ranks, sold him for, for 50. You know, Mares, Kante, all of these, drink water, right? For Fana, we did things the right way. And you, you'll know, Joe, you said, Leeds fans said, you know, we want to base our model off Leicester's model. We did it for years. And one bad, two, probably two seasons, one one bad season, maybe two bad seasons, it's all gone crumbling down. Like it did, obviously, for you in the early, you know, in, uh, a few years ago. So 
that's why I think people should have sympathy for Leicester because we did do it the right way, but one bad year and we're in the mud. And that's why I think people should have sympathy. Yes, dare to dream. <laughs> dare to dream. Because you know, you can't now, mate. You can't. I almost felt like I was listening to Peter Risdale then. <laughs> we lived a dream. <laughs> we did. We did. But, we did live. No, but my, right. Had right. Had you have got Champions League, them two seasons that you bottled it, you wouldn't even be having this conversation. Leeds was the And same. I told you. I yes, told you, you this. And yes, you, you said did. no FA Cup all day. And I said no. No, yeah. Champions League. Yeah. I hear you, but I'm on. I was on about silverware at the time. No one could have seen this uh, developing, you know, later down the line, um, because Leeds fans will tell you we, even though we spent 16 years out of the top flight, 15 years, we wouldn't, we wouldn't change it for that Champions League run under O'Leary. You just wouldn't. Like I, I don't think most would say. Yeah, look, if you watch Leeds during that time, it was, it was a special time. Um, and would you, would you change your Premier League and FA Cup to not be in the Championship now? No, not at all. That's what I'm saying. Not at all. That's what I'm Maybe saying. Maybe the FA Cup. Maybe the FA Cup. <laughs> Maybe That's a FA generational Cup. thing, though, I think. Well, I, like, I, I know I, I'm a little said, bit I, older than you. But then, mate, I, I honestly think if we qualified for the Champions League one or two of them years, you know, eventually it's going to catch up with you anyway. Because as I said, you can't do it consistently anymore. You can't. Mm. Even with Champions but League that's money, due to, that, that's not to do with money. That's you fumbling the bag on two Champions League runs. So my point is, had you have got in, then you can do it. You just I don't think your we manager could have. let you down. Well, look at Newcastle. Look at Newcastle. Yeah, but that's since the rules have come in, though, right? You no, know, the rules have been in place. There's no been. There's been no changes in the rules since 2013. Okay, but now but they're, they're only they're now actually enforcing implementing them. them. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, it was always there's a football regulator penalties. coming. That's because there's a football regulator coming in and and the shit. That's it. why they're acting hard now. Yes, no, <laughs> I hear, I hear what you're saying in that respect. But what I will say is, because I have to say this, and I don't, I'm sick to the back teeth, right? And this isn't a dig at you, just in general. I watch a lot of football YouTube. I hear I listen to podcasts all all bloody day when I'm not on here walking with the dogs or whatever. I'm sick to the back teeth of hearing, of hearing like poor me cases, because at the end of the day, for me, yourselves, Forest, Everton, cheated. That's the way I see it. Ultimately, the rules are there. All clubs signed up to the rules. You didn't adhere to them rules. My club did. Still didn't help us because we were fucking relegated. You know, I think we finished... Uh, look, this is how bad my memory is. We finished behind you, right? We finished behind you. We finished behind... Um, yeah, behind you, behind Everton, behind Forest. But my, yeah. my, my, my point is, could had Leeds United cheated, well, maybe we'd have stayed in the league and took our, our six points. And, uh, do you know what I mean? But we went about it the right way because our club went, do you know what? If we... If we if we balls this up, we're going to get points. So we're going to have to stick to the rules. And I don't think clubs should be able to flaunt the rules. Like, for it, like it didn't work for you, right? But it worked for Forrest. No, but bro, listen, hear me out. It yeah. didn't work for you, but it worked for Everton and Forrest. Because guess what, bro? They're still in the Premier League. And guess what? The teams are that shit this season that they're probably both going to still be game game week 38 in the Premier League. So they'll take the medicine. Yeah, they're complaining now. You cheated and it didn't work. It's going to work for them. So they should be but, punished. But what sporting advantage did we get from selling for Fana, our best defender at the start of the season, for 80 million quid? I'm, we, we no, didn't. I'm not saying that. I'm not saying no, that. No, but that's what but, I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The, the, whole, the whole But you shouldn't have... Narrative. You, you, how much did you spend over by... In t I think it was 40 million or something. Right, in losses, so you had 40 in million losses. head start above my club, which is a couple of players. Yeah, but we sold we sold for Farna, mate. We we no, got rid of our best defender. Is, I, I hear you, but my point is you overspent by 40 million, so therefore you had a 40 million pounds worth of sporting advantage over my club. I who get what you you're saying. That summer? Who, who did you buy that summer? Uh, Vout Fass. Right, so how much was he? Oh, 12 million, maybe. Okay, so you don't get him. Who else? Um, 
I, I mean, I, I think it was just him, mate. And the, but it was the January. It was the January right. where the problem is. We signed uh, Harry Suter and Victor Christiansen. Which turned out to be duds, right? Real duds, really. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. But, but, but you should, all right, but yeah. You, and, and, and look, and I now look at it. Look, my, my club never backed Bielsa, never did this, did, a, did all that. And, you know, we, we would go through Januarys and not buy one single fecking player. I remember this time and be like, what are we doing here? But mm. I'm not trying to give them any sort of credit because they don't deserve it. But my point is, had they have gone, well, feck it, we'll just go anywhere. We could we could have stayed up. We could have finished higher. We might not have got in a relegation battle under Bielsa. He might not have been sacked if we'd have just gone, feck it, let's spend an extra 40, 50 million on players. Who, who knows? Who knows? But that's the sporting advantage. But I know you lost your your best centre-back or whatever, but ultimately you overspent by £40 million, so therefore you had a £40 million advantage over my club. That's the way I see it. You probably had more than that, but that was good transfer policy because you were able to make such a profit on someone like Fofana. My club operated shit like that, apart from the Rafinha deal, but yeah. The, the, the thing, mate, is, I, again, I'll say this, I do not... Um, I, I, I am not claiming in any way, shape, or form that we haven't breached FFP in the Premier League, right? I'm, I am completely agreeing, yes, we have done that. The thing I refuse to do, I absolutely refuse to do, is say that we've intentionally, intentionally, with well, bad with bad intentions, flouted the rules or, or, or cheated. I will refuse to say that because I truly don't believe we have. I believe that we have got a couple or a few really, really, really bad eggs in our in our board, right? Um, I won't get into it. One of them is called John Rudkin. I've spoken to you before about him, but mm -hmm. I've got people, I've got, uh, you know, I will say that there are incompetent people at our football club and unfortunately, our, um, our, we are now run by an idiot, um, Top, uh, Vishai's son. Uh, he's an absolute uh, tool. Um but I will refuse to say that we we acted with bad intentions to try and cheat. I will refuse to say, it and I will, and I just won't admit it. I won't admit it, mate, because I I don't think I don't believe we have. We, you know, the even club, last summer, the the club spent more than they should. They knew they were doing that. I'm, and this isn't a dig at you or Leicester City. It's a di the owners knew they were overspending. So in January when they spent Suter and they spent on Christensen, they knew that it was going to take them over the threshold. So therefore, they knew they were going to cheat. Our club went, uh, no, we can't, we can't. Unless they were, this is what I'm saying about incompetence at the club, you know, unless they, they actually truly didn't believe that they were going to go over the threshold in terms of whether that's, do you, you really know, maybe believe that? Gonna sell, maybe, maybe that's to do with because depending on where we remember this, Joe. Who, who you know, told you? No, who from Joe, the club Joe, has told you that? Who from the club has gone? We didn't know this was going to happen. Feck off. Remember on, this, Mandy. Joe. If we'd have finished in Europe in the top eight, right in that season, yeah, we would have had more prize money. We so we we may not have breached. You've got to remember that. Depending on where we finished in the league, a lot of things may have changed in terms of we might have sold a certain player early, you know, in, in that FFP window. We might have sold somebody in January if we hadn't have been in a rut because we were in a rut. We couldn't sell in January. So what I'm trying to say to you, mate, is if we at the start of the season had finished in eighth, we would have had more prize money that season in that account in, in that FFP reporting period. So all I'm trying to say, I'm not saying we haven't breached, we have breached, but I'm saying I refuse to believe that we have done it within bad intentions of, of cheating of, I, I refuse to believe that somebody at the club has said, you know, we're going to overspend. Let, let's do it, you know, in a bid to, to stay in the league. I don't think that's what they've done. I really don't, but we have breached and that's it. And we've got to accept the, 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 the consequences. But what I'm trying to say is I, don't like the narrative that's been thrown around because I don't think we are cheats. I, I just don't think we are. You not. The fans not, but the owners are. Like, for me, bro, if you say, yeah, but if we'd have finished fifth or sixth or whatever, will the powers that be, I paid a hell of a lot of money to know that if that isn't a reality and we finish 14th, 
then we need to also take you have to plan short term, mid term, long term. Yeah, yeah. My football club is doing that, right? My football club is doing that. FAC has spoken about it, etc. So for me, for example, when they're signing players like Rodon without an option or an obligation, when they're signing Connor Roberts without an option or obligation, it's because they know we can't be obligated to buy this guy because if we don't go up... So them's the sort of things that you need to do. Yeah, at the end of the season, if we go up, we might have now competition for Rodon. Yeah, yeah, but the, they've done that on the basis that okay, we're not tied to this player if it all goes tits up. So that there for me is planning short, mid, long. Leicester haven't done that, bro, uh, or they have and thought we'll still be in the league. So feck it. I'm seeing people saying in the chat, I'm defending the owner. No, I've literally said the opposite. I think they're incompetent. I'm not defending the owners or, or the administration. I'm just saying no, that I don't think say, the intention. By saying they're incompetent, you're you're not giving. For me, right. This is Leicester City Football Club, a yeah, Premier yeah. League football club, a Premier League winning football club that has been decently run for a long time, bro, for a long time. You can't tell me that the people that they've employed are that dense. Like, surely not. Surely not. They are, mate. They're absolute idiots. Top, our owner, does not know what he's doing, mate. I'm, I've said... He doesn't, mate. He's he's been thrown in the deep end, obviously, with with the whole uh, with his with his dad dying, and yeah, of yeah the obviously, fe- I mean, the reason Vishai bought the club was for Top because I think Top wanted to ha- own a football club, and and that's why. Um, you, you know, there was no doubt at first that Top would get rid of the club just because his dad died. It was always quite obvious he was going to keep it, but he, I I just don't believe. You know, the reason that we're in the championship right now is because they didn't sack Brendan Rodgers earlier than they should have. Um, that's why we're in the championship right now. So, um, and and bear in mind, you know, we had to pay uh twelve million to sack Brendan Rodgers, um, which obviously contributed to FFP. So, um. Yeah, I I, I I do believe that they're, they're incompetent. And, and uh, as I said, I'll say his name again because a lot of uh, external fans won't know. John Rudkin, he's a... a uh, what, what's his name? Is it Walter Mitty, the guy who kind of like does every job? I mean, he, he was an academy coach and then he was like... Well, he started off at, like making beds in the academy for the, the, the kids and all that. And, and then he was a coach and now he's director of football looking after, a you know... A, a, a multi-million pound, you know, business in, in Leicester City, and it's just crazy how he's got that job. And but the thing is, he he he's been making mistakes for years, and and Top won't change it. So I'm just saying that it is incompetence. I don't believe that the football club have intentionally cheated to you know to gain a sporting advantage. I just think that it is incompetent. People disagree. That's fine. There'll no, never be fine. any proof because yeah, yeah. they'll never they'll no. never come out and say, yeah, we we cheated on purpose. We'll never know. 100%. But it's just what I believe, and. Um, I, I I do think that the whole narrative is uh, is a bit harsh because again for years, including this season and last season, when we breached FFP, we sold for big, um, and we did what we could on that front. But okay, let's move on from the FFP stuff. I I say that, but then I've asked this question. But I did put a poll in the chat. We've had over three hundred votes. I said, will these FFP issues hamper Leicester City this season? 56% of people say no. Do you worry, and we'll talk about the the Easter games now, how do you see this working? Because when it happened to Everton, it galvanised them for a couple of games, and now the shit again. Do do you think, with only eight games left, this is going to galvanise Enzo and the group, or have an adverse of it? Because I, I question Enzo at this point, bro, in terms of his experience in a running. Because... Look, I know you didn't agree at the time, but the comments to, about Leeds now seem silly. It looks to have... it looks. Yeah, I know you disagree, but in my opinion, it seems silly. Um, and it almost feels like since the turn of the year, you've you've really crumbled. Like, in terms of the fourth form league, you're way down the pecking order compared to the other top four teams in the championship. Um, so how, how do you see these... The, the running going, mate, and it, will this have a galvanising effect? Because, look, I know we've got different fan bases, but I've seen the Leicester City fans on about bringing clappers for Norwich and that. Let's create an atmosphere. 
<laughs> but I, know it was, I don't know what was worse, the, the that comment or the fact that there was a, an actual Leeds fan sat in his living room with Leicester fan TV on the TV. I think that was probably worse, to be fair. Well, but Lox, um, do, you, Lox, do you watch me? Not on my buddy living room do, TV, do you mate, watch that's me? for sure. Do you, not do you on my living me? room TV, mate. Answer the question. Do you watch <laughs> me? <laughs> on my phone, yes, I do. Yes, I do, there I do, you go. I it's do. the same thing. Go on. I have no idea, mate is the answer because the only time I can think which was similar to this was when Vishai died midway through a season. And I thought this is either going to kill us this season or it's going to, or we're going to come together and, and smash it. And it was really neither that year. We were kind of just hit and miss for the rest of the year until Brendan Rodgers got signed. So I honestly have no idea what's going to happen, mate. Um, you know, it's all like, you're just, I'm, I'm overthinking things a lot. <clears throat> Sorry, I'm overthinking things a lot. Like I'm thinking, does the turn in form coincide with maybe the, when the players found out about all the FFP shit? You know, because yeah, yeah. I think the, the 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 bad form happened or well, began. When did we play you? What when was that, mate? What date was that? I would, you definitely 23rd? were in bad form though, bro, because you were better than us that game. Let's be honest. We weren't in bad form. No, no, I know, I know. Twenty third of Feb, I think it was something like that. Um, we played you. And that is, it did start after that game. And obviously, you know, I could put that probably down to maybe the, the confidence hit of dominating the game and then obviously yeah, yeah. losing. Um, but then I'm thinking, is that roughly maybe around the time that they, the players found out about everything? I don't know. Maybe the players don't give a shit. I don't know. I'm, I don't know the mind of a footballer well oh, enough course, to yeah. know. I, I think um, I was watching Benjamin Bloom yesterday. He asked Parkin, actually, he, he, well, he was going to ask him, would this affect you as a player? And then they, they they never got on to the the question, unfortunately. So I didn't hear the answer. But um, I don't know, mate. I really don't know. I I think well, John Parkin. Say it again, mate. John Parkin, who does under the cosh. No, mate. What did I say? Who's who's the guy on? Oh, who's right, the guy okay, on? Yeah. yeah. I don't know, but it, yeah, the I guy on his Pat channel. Like He's a former player, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. The one under, right, yeah, yeah. Um. So. The the thing is, mate, um, it's quite obvious now that it's it's more important now than ever that we need to go up this year because we're in the shit if we don't, even more than we would have been. Sam Parkin. Sam Parkin. Um, whether that kind of transcends to the players, I don't know. You know, whether the players also have the mindset of, right, if we don't go up this year, the club's fucked. Um, so we have to go up and whatever. Um, so I don't know whether that's going to happen. I, I, I'm interested to hear what you think, what, what effect you think it will have on the players. But I honestly, I don't have an answer for you. And I think yeah, the next I'm three the games, we'll, we'll, we'll yeah. have an idea. The next three games, yeah. we'll have an idea on whether um, whether it's galvanised them or not. 100%. I agree with you, mate. I, 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 I don't know either. I'm, I'm obviously hoping. For you, I hope you go up, bro. But outside of you, I hope, it's, I hope Leicester bottle it. But for you, I hope you go up personally but taking emotion out of it and friendships out of it i'd love you to bottle it so i'd love you to come into these two and look but we won't know until 12 30 will we when it kicks off bristol city ain't an easy place to go but you should be beating them you know mm. like norwich is so tough as well by the way because because norwich are flying right now but it's at your place so um we will well, know we much. will know <laughs> yeah. yeah our home form's terrible as well to be fair at the minute and the fans these, are terrible. So, <laughs> these are the the this weekend's games, mate. Um, how do you see the points going? Let's just um, let's just have a chat. So, uh, Good Friday, obviously, it's in this order as well. So, Bristol City, Leicester, mate. What do you think score wise that'll be? A point. Do you reckon a point? I think it'll be a draw as well, mate. To be honest, uh, one one or something like that, mate. I think yeah. uh, as. You know, I, I watched um, your good friend uh, Connor Connor's video as well yesterday, and he, I think it was just he said that Leicester are going to win the league, and I don't know if that's like him just being having mind games or what, or I don't know. No, he hates but, Leeds United, bro. Uh, well, yeah, I've seen, I've seen stuff. I, I've seen he, he's he's like a you know, he flip flaps a lot, doesn't he, Connor? But um, <laughs> I, I can't talk. I can't talk. On it. Yeah, big up. Connor. My words, my words. Yeah, not <laughs> Joe's, obviously. My words. Um, <laughs> he does, he does flip flap. Um, but. <laughs> I'm I'm seeing a lot of Leeds fans say don't write Leicester off like there Malk in the chat as well saying it um, yeah, yeah. and I don't know if that's kind of maybe just trying to ease expectations on Leeds or if people actually truly believe it in my view right now I think Leeds are by far the favourites to to win the 
win the championship. And yeah. I think Ipswich at the moment are favourites to come second, personally. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at Stevie Froy. It's a good point, mate. You were having a go at that Leeds fan. You're watching other Leeds content creators as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, nah, uh, so, right, okay. What, what about Southampton, bro? Do you think... Because, to be honest, it's a good point because I've been told um, we're sleeping on Southampton, we're sleeping on Ipswich, and now now we're sleeping on Leicester. It's mad, isn't it? Um, but, <laughs> listen, I back Leeds all the way, but how do you see Southampton, mate? Because, oh, obviously, they've got two games in hand, but they must win them. They must win yeah. them. But, yeah. I, I, think, I think Southampton will win uh, against Borough, but I, I don't think they're going to get, get promoted. No. I don't. Um, no. I think Southampton will probably come fourth. And, um, you know, and they'll probably fail in the playoffs. I think, you know, obviously, Le- well, either, either Leicester or Ipswich will be in the playoff. Well, you know, if we're going mathematically or Leeds, it leads Leicester or, or Ipswich will be in the playoffs, along with West Brom. You know, it's going to be a really hard playoff. Yeah. Playoffs. It's going to be great to watch. Um, I just don't think Southampton will, mate. I don't. But um, but I do think they'll, they'll win this weekend. Yeah. 100%. What about Blackburn Ipswich, mate? Uh, Ipswich, yeah, Ipswich, mate. I, I think they'll be really good now, you know, to the end of the yeah. season. Yeah, yeah, I think. Um, I, They've been here last season, bro. They're like, bam, yeah. bam, bam. And, and again, on, on, Blue, on Bloom's show yesterday, he, he said about how we, uh, West Ipswich have three games in one week, their last three games, Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, or, or Sunday, isn't it? Sunday, Tuesday, Sunday, something like that. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think, you know, if you're Ipswich on the third to last game and you know right we've got three games in a week if we win every game we're up you know mm. it's like that's that's crazy and i think they'll they'll probably have the mentality to get over the line mate that yeah, yeah they've, they've got a better mentality than leicester they've got a better mentality than southampton it's just facts so i think mm. i think they could do it but yeah against blackburn mate ipswich win for sure what about us away at uh, Watford? <laughs> yeah, Le- leeds leeds win mate it's going to happen tom cleverley's there and he now he's their gaffer um, yeah. what about what about Norwich, mate? That'll be such a tough game, that you know, because they are flying. Yeah, you have got to win your home games, though, aren't you? If you're going up, you've got to. Yeah, I'd, we've been better away, mate, this year. Anyway, we've just been better away. Um, I, I yeah, I, honestly, bro, I, I just I just don't know. I, I I don't know until I see what the performance is like in the Bristol, Bristol. City game. Yeah, yeah. If they come out against Bristol City and like blow blow them away, blow us away as fans, then I mm. think it's uh, then you know you'll probably hear a different lot. So I'll probably course, I, I still won't say we'll win the league. I, I, you know, if if there's a clear improvement in performance, mentality, result, then I'll probably say you know, all right, okay, we're looking okay here for second, but. Like if we come out and we just look a bit, well, just a bit flat, like we have yeah. done for the last few games, then God knows what will happen against Norwich and and mm. the other games, mate. It, it could go really bad. Yeah. Yeah. What about Ipswich Saints? That's a huge one in it, man. Yeah. That is huge. That game. That's mad. Could go mate. either way. I think could go either way. That. I didn't realise the Ipswich Southampton one was that soon. Obviously, I know that yeah. Ips, uh, I know that Southampton play us and. Leicester. Yeah. Uh, got us on the last uh, day as well, they? Oh, they play all three, don't they? Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, do, do you know what? Norwich could have a big say as well because Norwich play Ipswich and the last time Ipswich beat Norwich was like na- 2009, bro. They haven't beaten Norwich since 2009. So that could go not. And, and it's at Carroll Road as well, by the way. So Norwich could have a big say. Yeah, yeah. Um, that Yeah, it's a massive game. Like, mm. I, I see it now, <laughs> how important, I mean, even the next two games, you know, two, the next two game weeks, I think people might have a different prediction for the top three or the top two come, you know, two weeks time or one week's time. So yeah, it's tough, mate. Um, pro- I, I'd probably still, fan- I'd probably still give Ipswich the edge, mate. I just, yeah. I just can't look past Ipswich at the minute. Um, all season, you know, not just me. They're a lot the of people... games that the, if Southampton want top two, They've got to beat South, you know, they've got to beat Ipswich Southampton, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, Southampton obviously play all three of us, and you know, they 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 could have um, imagine they won all three, imagine they beat exactly us, imagine well, yeah. they beat yep. Ipswich, imagine they beat you on the last day. Obviously, you, you might be up by then anyway, but um, 
Yeah, they could have a massive say. And, and if they win them three games, they could easily get top two. If they win all them exactly. three, yeah, yeah. they could get top two still. Nine so, points, isn't it? It's nine points, that as well. Big. With, with all, yeah, with all the twists and turns in the season, it would be very stupid to just completely rule out Southampton. But I just yeah. can't see it at the minute. Yeah. No, definitely. What about Hull, mate? As a Leicester fan, <laughs> is that a fixture you're looking at going, if any team's going to cause problems? Because Hull have drawn with Southampton, drawn with you, they've been good against the Beat better us teams. earlier as well. Yeah, yeah, so is that a game as an opponent you look at and go, Hull could do something for us here? Yeah, they they could. Um, they look... <sighs> I that think home if, form for Leeds, though, when it was still not being beaten at home, man. Ex exactly. I, I think we would have, if we were a little bit, even a little bit better in that whole game that we played um, a couple of weeks ago, I would have fancied us to beat them, mate. They weren't amazing. It was just that we were shocking. I mean, we we scored twice. I know one of them was a penalty, um, but we, we scored twice. And um, and it, it was just, like, again, our defence that let us down. Um Fabio uh, Carvalho, is it Carvalho? Is that yeah, Carvalho, yeah, and Philogene as well, good players. Yeah, 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 looked very mm. good, mate. Um, and, you know, so yeah, they're, they're a good team, absolutely, there's no doubt about that. Um, I just don't think they looked as good as some people made out. I just think yeah, we were poor. Earlier in the season, they did a bloody job on us, mate, when they beat us 1-0 mm. at our place. When we were in, like, flying as well, they beat us 1-0. Uh, it was a deflected goal, by the way, but there we go. Um, but it was a smash and grab, so they're they're capable of doing that. But yeah, they didn't look great. I I would still fancy to beat them there, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think to be honest, and Leeds fans won't like me for saying this, but I think I think a lot of Leeds fans are giving him far too much respect. I don't think they're all that. They're a good side on their day, mm. and they can keep the ball and all that sort of stuff. But I just I, honestly, I think they're getting a little bit too much respect. That's just my opinion. But listen, yeah, we'll, we'll I agree. I agree. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. We will be talking to uh, to Amph on uh, Thursday, obviously, the White Rose rival, so we'll see what he's got to say about that 6pm this week. Um, yeah, Locks, just to finish up, mate, are you going up right now? Um, no. Really? Where do you finish the then, third? Yeah. Yeah, really I fancy us to finish above Southampton, especially if you beat beat them on the last. Yeah, I, I've got us in third at the minute, mate. I think, um, you know, if you look at the form table, we're like 18th or 17th, something like that. Um, we this, are. This, this this break could have come at the right time, though, bro. It could, but a lot of our players were away anyway on international duty. So um, yeah. um, we, had, we, we had a few Any stay injuries? in. Any injuries? No. Not that I'm aware of, mate. No. Well, Va Va I think Va Vardy didn't play against Chelsea, um, but there's like a whole conspiracy thing about that with Leicester fan. I, I think I think he just I, I just think Enzo wanted to keep him basically, just didn't want to risk an injury. So um, so yeah, uh, but no, no injuries, mate. We've got Ndidi back. Ricardo Pereira's back as well after the international big, break. Big one. So. Big one, um, you know, we know that our full strength side will is capable of, of winning 100%. every game, but I just I, I think we've taken too much of a of a hit to our confidence, mate. But so for, for now, I'm saying third. Big up more, yeah, third. Okay, um, I think you'll still get top two, bro. If I'm being honest, but that could change when once I see you on Friday. Because on you, Friday, if, if you're poor on Friday, I'm I'll be like. Oh, okay. That they're now not taking on things from Enzo. It's all too fractious behind the scenes and all that. You need a big performance for me. Um, I know it's just about getting points, but you need a big performance, I think. Um, Kevin, it, it, listen, it's hard, Kevin. You know this man. You know it's hard um, to, sometimes when you're in a rut to to get get behind it. Just before we finish up as well, folks, I just want to bring this to light because um, there is only a couple of hours uh, left on this. I can't do it on the watch along because it'll be finished. There's only uh, six hours left on it. There's a chance to win um, a Christ Centre your Somerville match-worn signed Leeds United shirt from coincidentally, the 1-0 win against Leicester City at um, at the King Power. Um, so, yeah, uh, <laughs> it's as if I did that on purpose. I didn't, genuinely. Um, but yeah, uh, Thursday, the 28th of March, which is today, it closes at 8.30. Um, there are just 18 tickets available. It'd be great if you could just box them now. 
Um, can I enter? I'm going to enter to if I, to burn it if I win, mate. Yeah. <laughs> would you not? Would you not just give it, mate? Would you not just give it? Me? Yeah, yeah, of course yeah. I would. Yeah, yeah. for three ninety five, mate. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Cheers, bro. Um, yeah. So three pound ninety five. Listen, that's not the only one as well. You can get hospitality tickets for the whole city game, which is on Monday, of course, and also six. Uh, Wilfred Nonto signed shirts. They didn't do as well, I don't think so. The, every draw's got a Nonto <laughs> signed shirt in there. Now, obviously, we gave one away on this show that went all the way to Kuala Lumpur, and I've got mine in the, in my in my wardrobe. But, yeah, please do check them out. Football prizes, link is in the description. Make sure you check out Locks as well over on Leicester City Fan TV and also Tafosi Nation TV, which is a F1... Um, F1 uh, uh, podcast uh, videos type of vibe. Do you want to tell people about that? I've been watching it. I've been watching it myself, folks. It's good. <laughs> Joe, yeah, Joe, Joe still well. thinks. Yeah, Joe still thinks Jensen Button races. I think. Um. <laughs> yeah, Damon, Damon Hill, uh, Michael Schumacher. Um, although yeah, yeah. I did watch, and I, it's a brilliant film. Even if you don't like F1, Rush. Yes, great. What film, a mate. movie. What yeah. a movie that is, by the way. But tell people about To Force in the Ocean, mate. Yeah, so as everyone in the chat probably know, Oscar, uh, I, I've started it with Oscar. So um, he, we, we always speak about Formula One in, uh, in, in a group chat. So uh, we thought, well, let's just start up a channel and, and chat. So yeah, a few different, um, a few different videos. Um, there's a, a couple of videos that came out today or last night and, and this morning, which me and Oscar have done talking about the, uh, the, the Grand Prix that just happened. So yeah, check it out. Come and, uh, yeah. you know, if, if you're a formula, if you like formula one, come and have it, you know, even if it, you know, don't do it for me, do it for Oscar, you know, your, your fellow. Yeah, exactly, yeah. 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 Do, so. it, do it for Oscar and his Bruce Springsteen cap. Um, yeah, it's it's on there as well. He wore it last night as well, mate. Uh, did he, he did wear it last night. Yeah. I reckon yeah. it's because it's the most like, F1 looking cap he's got, so he because he, he, he's got a lot of golf hats and that. But I reckon because it's quite squared off and a big peak, he's like, this makes me look like an F1 driver. So I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna do it. Oh no, it um, wasn't the Springsteen one last night. It was the jacket. Sorry, he had a different. Okay. He, had, he had a different cap on last night. Actually. Should we have a look? Should we have a look? Yeah, we'll UF. I he, think I don't know what it was, but uh, um, what is UF? That is something I've seen before. But this is Oscar. He's just come from the pit. Um, <laughs> at, at Silverstone, uh, as you can see, um, he's just come from from the pit. So make sure you check it out, folks. All okay? Um yeah, yeah, thank please, you. Please, please do do that to Forcing Nation TV. All right. Um, yeah, he discusses Lightning McQueen on there. And if well. any Leeds fans like watching Leicester um, meltdowns, then I'll be live on Leicester Fan TV on Thursday. So there you There'll go. Be more I, on I that. was on there on Saturday, Sunday morning as Sunday well. But morning. I had to, I had to dash. Yeah. To, yeah. I I uh, I was asleep at the time, but um, I, I did wake up and watch it, and I saw you dig me out for my Harvey Barnes thing. So thanks. For <laughs> I had to, bro. <laughs> I had to. <laughs> nah, it's great. It's a great channel, folks. So make sure you go check it out. <laughs> thanks, Locks, as well for giving up your time. Um, I'll be back tonight, folks, from half seven because I'm going to do a double watch along. Um, because we've got England playing Belgium, but the most important one, and I can't believe I'm saying this, but. Basically, Wales is Leeds United's second team now. Uh, Wales take on Poland, which, of course, is Locke's team as well. So Yeah, I've got, um, my, I've got my Wales top ready, mate. So, uh, do it, man. <laughs> you need one of them bucket hats. I do actually rate them bucket hats. I've got one. I've got one, yeah. I need to f pull yeah. it out from somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, You need to send it me, bro. I'll be wearing it. I'll be supporting <laughs> Wales at this rate. Um, yeah, but, yeah, yeah, Ethan Amper. Uh, do you think they'll win, by the way? Do you think they'll beat Poland at home? I think you will yeah. at home. Yeah. Yeah, I reckon so, mate. Yeah, it's looking. Look, there was a big worry, obviously. You know, obviously they look Bale good, bro. Retired. And they've got a young team, man. They look good. When Bale retired, mate, obviously it's all like. I mean, it'll be like when when Vardy leaves Leicester. It's kind of like, oh fucking hell, you know, who do we rely on oh. now? But they're looking all right, mate. Yeah, they're looking good. So um, it's a shame there's some fucking Leeds fans there, uh, Leeds players there, because I'm kind of like, oh, I don't want them to win now just because of them knobheads. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm joking. Mate, but, we uh... are Wales, mate. We've got Rodon, <laughs> Ampadu, Roberts, James. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, probably if Leeds United go up... I and Danny Ward. Feel... <laughs> <laughs> I, if Leeds United go up, I think we'll sign Ben Davis from Spurs as well. Yeah, I think we will. take that? Think, yeah. yeah, 100%. Bit crap, but no, he's not a man for starting as a the newly promoted side. We don't for me, mate. Leeds United, a center back, not to be left back, left, left back, yeah, left back. 
Mm-hmm. See, for First me, Leeds United need to come away from glamour signings. We signed Firpo from Barcelona vibes. We need to say, do you know what? Here's Ben Davis, who's played a bit part role for Ange Postacoglu in the top four race. Could he come and do a job with his Welsh teammates at the back in the team that's just been promoted? Yes, Ben Davis would, would fit straight in for me. I'd, I'd rather the Firpo, mate. I'd rather Firpo. No, you really wouldn't at think. all. I would, man. yeah. No, he's finished. Wouldn't. Ben Davis is crap. It's no, crap. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. he's not crap. Oh, well. Yeah, but I think he's a great <laughs> signing for us, man. Um, yeah, of course, Luca Nets, bro. But that might be a bit of a bit of a pipe dream. I'd love. Yeah, careful what you do, mate. You don't want to breach FFP, bro. Well, careful. yeah, we're we're smarter behind the scenes, bro. Don't yeah. worry about that. <laughs> I genuinely did think the other day, Locks, right? I started to process it and, and, and thought, what would I be saying if Leeds United had brought the rules? And I did. You think, would be it, saying what I'm saying, mate. You I would, would be. disagree with the rules, but I would still wouldn't be saying we didn't cheat. I'd be blaming the board, man. I'd be blaming the board for being. Which is what I'm clowns. doing. I'm blaming the board you're for not you. You're giving them a free ride saying, oh, no, they didn't mean to. They didn't mean to cheat, no. Fuck off, man. Did. Anyway, we'll we'll be, we'll be here all day if we go back on. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. As Danny says, smash a like. I'll be back at R seven for the double watch along the home nations. Come on, Wales. Come on, England. And um, yeah, I'll see you tonight. And then I'll tomorrow, be in the chat. Yeah, be there, be there. Join me if you want, mate. Join me for the yeah, Wales game. Could do. Yeah, man. Yeah. Drop in for a bit. Um, tomorrow, that Daniel Farkas press conference is back as well, which means football really is underway. We'll find out what's happened with the Wales lads, with Gruyev, with Kamara. Are they going to come back fit? Is Rutter good to go after his hernia up? Um, so yeah, Wednesday tomorrow, half one, but tonight is of course the double watch long. So see you tonight for thanks 